Hi, I'm Dwayne Goins, registered dietitian and owner of Neurotrition, where I offer nutrition and neurofeedback services. In this video, I will be answering the question, why is lens neurofeedback not more popular, and why haven't I ever heard of it before? First, check out my disclaimer in the description box and take a look at my other videos on lens neurofeedback to give you a better background on what I'm talking about. So why hasn't your doctor recommended lens neurofeedback or any kind of neurofeedback to you? Why don't you hear about it on the news or on many other YouTube channels? Great questions. Through my own reflections and experience with clients, I've come up with five reasons. Number one, the sunken cost fallacy. It's the reason why we stick with what doesn't work and will go down with the ship. It has to do with financial pressure, social pressure, relationship pressure, and self-ego. The sunken cost fallacy is the phenomenon where a person is reluctant to give up on a strategy or behavior because they have already invested in it, even though it's clear that it would be better to give up on it. An example would be an investment in a relationship with either friends or a significant other that is not working out, but you don't want to cut ties or move on because you've invested so much time, energy, and money into it. When it comes to your health, it might feel like you've already put effort into other avenues of care in your life and justifying making a change to yourself, your family, or your coworkers seems overwhelming or like admitting that you've been doing it all wrong. It stems from a resistance to change. Even if you want to see the changes in your life, sometimes our illnesses and our problems become part of our identity and we would rather keep our identity the way it is rather than experience a new way of living. Even good change can be difficult for people to accept because they are used to the way things are but certain characteristics which you attribute to your personality might actually be suppressed brain patterns. I've seen people express it as, now I can be my true self, meaning they don't have to buy into the characterization of themselves as forgetful, cranky, explosive, or lazy. Those could instead be manifestations of a problem which Lens can help with. I often say, Lens will give you what you need, not necessarily what you want. Sometimes the two are aligned, but sometimes they are not. Couples going through turbulent stages in their relationship might find that Lens helps expedite the resolution to their conflicts and gives clarity to their problems. I had a couple who discontinued couples counseling because one of the party's reactivity had decreased significantly and they were better able to help manage their conflicts. On the flip side, I've had individuals find the clarity and courage to leave or separate from toxic relationships at the conclusion of their Lens sessions. The problem arises if the clarity Lens gives a person in self-awareness causes friction with their current desires or environment. If they are not ready to make changes while becoming more aware of their problems, this is going to result in a type of crisis and potentially a discontinuation of lens. If someone was in survival mode with their job or career and lens makes them more aware that they are not fulfilled in their job, this can present them with a crisis if they are unable to make changes or don't want to make a change. On the other hand, it could give someone ready for a change the energy, courage, and clarity to make a career change. When I went through lens sessions myself, it helped give me the clarity and motivation I needed to start my own private practice and leave my prior job. But again, when the changes from lens are not anticipated, this can lead to a certain amount of stress. This stress is not permanent, but can cause discouragement if the client is expecting immediate positive changes. Often clients will have positive changes immediately, but that is not always the case. Yet these positive changes will come soon enough in as soon as a few sessions, but it requires some commitment or willingness to make changes to see the benefits. These changes can only be discerned by the client and not by me. Number two, resistance from the medical field. Even though Lens has been around for 30 years and is FDA approved with plenty of evidence-based research and studies with minimal side effects, it is not widely known or accepted in the medical field, and this is considered more of an alternative approach. Why? Well, because surgeries and medications are what keep the healthcare system alive. This may be a cynical view, but as someone who has worked in a hospital for over six years, I can tell you it's true. As far as I know, only the VA offers lens neurofeedback as a covered service under insurance and supplies a service to former military. They offer it along with other types of neurofeedback that are, quote, supported by the research and recognized by the major professional organizations in the field, end quote. Lens is considered in this category. So why isn't it more popular in healthcare? The sunken cost fallacy is also at play here. Doctors or healthcare professionals might be resistant or reluctant to consider neurofeedback because they've invested so much time, energy, and money into a different method. It's not a modality which brings in a lot of money from insurance. In fact, most insurance plans do not cover biofeedback. Or if they do, it does not reimburse as much money as other services. So hospitals are less likely to want to promote it. 
My interpretation is that some provider's hesitancy is a willful kind of ignorance or lack of interest or even a jadedness. Let's not forget that doctors, nurses, and other healthcare providers are also severely overworked. On a personal level, professionals might feel like their line of work is being belittled by the benefit of lens. But the truth is that it is a wonderful complement to any modality. Number three, fear of being disappointed and learned helplessness. When you are suffering, it can be difficult to put yourself out there for another disappointment. You've maybe tried so many modalities and spent so much money trying to relieve your problems. The feeling of helplessness can almost become a belief system or a worldview, that life is suffering and nothing is going to help you or make it better. It can also manifest as scientific skepticism, where you'd rather reserve your hopefulness because you don't really buy into it or you think the benefits people claim to have from it are all placebo or in their heads. Maybe people are just manufacturing the changes in their heads because they want it so badly. Let me address the placebo argument first. Most people who find lens neurofeedback have suffered a lot. They have been through countless other modalities and were not susceptible to placebo with those methods and still ended up looking further for help. So why all of a sudden would they experience placebo results from lens? Secondly, there is an interesting story told by Stephen Larson, a provider of lens, who talked about how where the lens software was updated, the software engineer who updated it made a mistake during the update and lens patients around the United States started complaining of headaches after their lens treatments. After investigating, they discovered that the engineer had a brain aneurysm, and that's why he made those mistakes. When the problem was fixed, there were no more complaints about headaches, and the patients continued to experience benefits. So the software really is changing something. Those headaches weren't all in their heads, and neither were their benefits when the problem was fixed. I tell people all the time, it's something to cross off your list. Number four, fear of the unknown. What exactly is the lens doing to your brain? The idea of putting sensors on your head can be intimidating. I had a friend ask, half jokingly, are you going to microwave my head? It's a valid fear. There are negative associations attached to neurofeedback because it reminds people of electric shock therapy. Shock therapy during the 1950s was used for mental conditions like severe depression and mania. It was used often without consent or anesthesia and was not always effective and sometimes made people even worse off. Today's version of it is electroconvulsive therapy or ECT, which is much more regulated, but it has to be administered under general anesthesia. It is considered a last resort if talk therapy, medications, and other modalities do not work because side effects can be severe like memory loss and benefits are not guaranteed. Lens is not in this category at all. It uses an electrical signal, non-electrical current, 1,000 times weaker than a cell phone. It is so mild they cannot even pick up the readings when tested. It is FDA approved for babies as young as three months, children, the elderly, and even animals. It does not have any severe side effects and can be used before other therapies or in conjunction with other therapies. It is also highly effective. Upwards of 85% of people experience benefits. It is painless and has even less side effects than the medications which people feel comfortable taking on a regular basis. Other associations with new ageism, hypnosis, or mind control can also deter certain people from lens. But lens is not in this category either. It does not take control away from the patient. It does not have a belief system or spirituality attached to it. It is simply a way to calm down the nervous system by interrupting suppressed brain patterns. Regardless of a person's belief system, lens is evidence-based and it does not need you to take a leap of faith. But it can work with your belief system. As a Christian myself, I find lens to be another avenue for healing and helping people of all walks of life. Last but not least, the fifth reason why lens is not more popular is that some people do not notice any benefits or changes. This is fair enough. Why keep doing something if you didn't notice anything? Well, let me present three reasons why changes might go unnoticed. The first reason is that the client is not receiving enough feedback. Depending on a person's sensitivity or hardiness, they might need less or more feedback respectively. With myself, I can go up to 15 minutes of feedback on my head before I notice changes. On the other hand, I have clients who need 10 seconds or less of feedback on their head and notice dramatic changes. So this does require some trial and error to settle on the right dosage for treatment. Just like trying a new medication, dosage matters. The second reason is that some people are not very sensitive to their bodies or external stimuli. This type of person doesn't notice changes easily and needs their surrounding community to help them notice these changes. But if they live alone, it might be difficult for them to notice the benefits even if their quality of life is approving. I had a client whose girlfriend noticed that her boyfriend was being more attentive and present when he was undergoing lens treatment, but he did not report that to me as one of the changes, so he was not aware of this himself. 
The third reason why lens might not produce desired changes is because there is an underlying health problem that needs resolution before the maximum benefit of lens can be achieved. I had a client who was undergoing lens and had upwards of 15 sessions while experiencing very positive changes, but with a lot of fatigue and irritation after sessions. However, after doing a parasite cleanse, she and I noticed she could handle significantly greater feedback time with more energy post-session and longer lasting benefits. This is why it's important to work with a doctor or health expert to improve all aspects of your health, as lens is not a standalone cure for all things, but it will certainly help. These are just some of the reasons why lens and neurofeedback in general are not more popular. For myself personally, even after seeing a family member have an incredible transformation through lens, it still took me over 15 years to finally decide to get sessions myself. I thought I didn't really need it because I was functional and didn't really understand the benefits to someone like me. It seems to me that people have to get to a place of openness by hitting rock bottom where they are searching outside the current health paradigm. That's what happened to me. I was very discouraged by the lack of progress I was seeing with my patients as an outpatient dietitian in the hospital. I've explained to friends and family how I got my smell and taste back with lens neurofeedback, but I'm beginning to think that even if I said I was blind and now I see, many wouldn't really believe it. I think people are oversaturated with health information and are overwhelmed and numb to quick fixes or cures, but not all treatments are created equal. And given the benefits, I believe lens is worth your time and money to at least check it off your list as it is very low risk and high reward. If you have any questions, you can find my information in the description box and feel free to leave questions or comments below. Please subscribe to support my channel and I'll see you in the next video. They cannot even pick it up. The, it is so mild, they cannot even pick it up. Okay. <laughs> I do better when I'm parched. <laughs> Go, dear. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's true. That's a bad story. <laughs> Is it in the shot? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs>